Hey, Don here. So in this video, I'm going to address something that I get asked about a lot. And that's, hey, bro, what pick do you use? And I get why people ask me that, but it doesn't really matter. It's a pick is only a tool to get the sound that you want. And I'm going to show you in this video that even though I'm going to go through several different, you know, sizes and thicknesses of the picks, the accuracy will still be there. And that's not only about, you know, that wouldn't just be me, that would be anyone who has a, a decent technique. The technique shouldn't change just because you change picks. But what happens though is that it's almost like an EQ. Uh, so you, you get a different sound. So it's all about finding the pick that you like the sound of, meaning the, the pick that you find is the easiest way to get to the sound that you have in your head. So that's what this video is about. And hopefully after watching this, you might have a good idea of what you like the sound of and then you can go to a music store and just pick up a bunch of picks and you know really dig in and find out what works for you but i would also like to add it's not a stupid question at all i remember back in the day like in the early 90s when i started to get my my you know technique and practicing together i was really worried about like well what if i don't have the right pick because when you haven't developed your technique yet you, you kind of don't know if it's going to impact your ability to pick fast or not. So I was always very interested in what my favorite players use, like, oh, Petrucci uses Jazz 3, the black ones, but Eric Johnson sounds great and he uses the red ones, but then Paul Gilbert uses completely different ones, and then Ingve uses different ones from Paul Gilbert, and it's kind of like, it's, it was quite confusing at first, but then as my technique started to get better, and I tried different picks, I just realized that it doesn't really matter in terms of speed and accuracy, unless you have some outlandish pick. But if you just give me any pick and it has a fairly pointed end, I should be good. I might not sound exactly the way that I want to sound, but the accuracy and the, the technique should still be intact. All right, so the first pick that I'm gonna try is the standard one that I, I end up using all the time, pretty much. And this, uh, this is the pick that he sends me a bunch of every few months. So let's just play something like this. So that basically the sound that I really like and also it's quite easy for me to get that sound uh, because I have this pick right and this is a 1.5 millimeter uh, and let's go to this one I don't even know very thick though uh, quite pointy which is good uh, so let's see how that works definitely a, a different feel But as you can hear, it still works. There's, there's no difference in my technique, more than, you know, whatever difference I have anyway, because I'm human, not a guitar profile. So if we go to another one here, this is a, I don't even know what this is, but it's quite thin. So let's give that a try. Also works. Uh, let's go to a classic. These are the ones that I used to play before. So these are the Max Grip picks from Dunlop. Uh, so Jazz 3. So these feel also quite, you know, I'm quite at home with these. So that works fine. Uh, all right, let's go for this weird one. This is actually a student of mine made this with a 3D printer. See how that works. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna blame the student. So now I can really feel that this is sort of a, a more slippery surface, which is, you know, some people really prefer that. I, I kind of want the more, uh, I don't know, even know what uh, type of material this is, but it's kind of like, uh, it's very similar to the Jazz 3s, and it's a bit softer plastic. Basically, and it, I, I like them because they're not as clicky. If you ever tried like the big stubby picks, you know, those uh, purple ones, and I know that Marshall Harrison plays those and it sounds great, but I find that for me it's, it's too clicky uh, on the string. But this one is quite smooth. So, you know, slightly different sound. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, we got this one. It's more like this again a Mathis pick, but it's more like a Fender Heavy, I guess. It's two millimeters. 
and that same type of a material. Also quite smooth actually. So that one also works. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. We can go for, oh, another one. Again, this is not intended to be a big sponsor video for Mathis necessarily, but those are the picks that I use and he sends me a lot of picks. Uh, so this is another one, but it's a uh, quite thick, but also pointy and 2.8. That's a really thick pick actually. So. It's quite smooth. Yeah, works. Uh, and at this point, you probably see my point uh, that I made in the beginning of the video that uh, accuracy wise, it doesn't really matter that much what pick I use. And also, since I've been using uh, this one for the past few years, I'm more used to this one. So it's gonna be a bit of a change when you, you know, all of a sudden you, you pick up a pick that's like over a millimeter uh, thicker. So, but, but other than that, if I would be practicing with this constantly, I don't think I would have had any issues with that either. Uh, it's, it's just a different sound and a different feel. So this one is quite different though, because this is very thin. So this is like 0.50 millimeters. So it's very floppy, right? So these thin picks are great for just strumming because you can, you can really get into the strum away without it being super loud. Otherwise, if you have like a normal uh, thick pick, you kind of have, have to be super relaxed in your grip uh, to, to get the same sort of sound. So these are really comfortable for, for acoustic strumming, but I basically never do that. So it's, you know, I, I don't ever use these. Uh, anyway, it still worked somewhat, right? I, I don't like the sound at all. It's too clicky and too floppy. I didn't really enjoy that. So, uh, but my point still stands, the, the accuracy, is not really part of the pick. And let's just for fun, let's just turn this one around and see if I pay, play with the non uh, pointy end. I don't, I think that will be a disaster. And as you can hear, that doesn't really work well at all. But it's the accuracy is still kind of there in terms of the, the synchronization. And that's not about me, you know, uh, patting myself on the back. It's just that would be the same for anyone. But this will this will be a horrible way to to try to get the, the sound that I want. I, I think I would have to really hit it flat on if that would to get that to be possible. But obviously, no one's putting a gun to my head and having me play a pick that I don't like playing with, and also not using the side of the pick that I that I want to play with. So it's kind of besides the point. Hopefully this gives you some insight into what the different picks will do. And you know, there's so many picks out there, but I find that at the end of the day, it's just whatever pick that gets you the sound that you want in the easiest way possible. So I've just found that with, uh, you know, Jazz 3 or the ones that I have now from Mathis, I don't need to, to fight the instrument. I, I can find the tone that I want very easily. Uh, in comparison to, to other picks that I've tried. So what I would suggest if you're unsure, just buy a bunch of picks uh, of different sizes and you know brands and then try them out and see like, all right, so I, I prefer this sound. So you can sort of find your way uh, by doing that. Um, and then once you know what you like, then you'll stick with that. But in terms of speed and accuracy, you don't need to worry about it because pretty much anything you put in your hand and if you put in the, put in the required work, to, to get the synchronization down and all the accuracy stuff and all the stuff that I wanted to talk about here on the channel, you're good to go. You, you don't need to worry about uh, anything regarding that side of the technique. So drop that and just get down to practicing. <laughs>to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. 
So in this book you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start. It's nine bucks and I think it's very underpriced, but I did it that way just so as many people as possible could be helped by this. So check that out.